this opportunity that you are given unto us to be gathered together in the land of the living to learn again at your feet. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness in our lives. We thank you for your mercy upon us. We thank you, O oh Lord, for your divine provisions, for your protection. Thank you, O oh God, for your loving kindness. Glory be to your name, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Father, we have come again to learn even at your feet. Tonight, O oh Lord, we ask for divine wisdom, divine knowledge, divine understanding. We ask, O oh Lord, that you speak to us tonight. Lord, we ask, O oh God, that you give our hearts a hearing experience in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, O oh God, that tonight let every yoke be broken in Jesus' name. Let every burden be lifted in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, please give us your word in season. Help us to be doers of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We may have our seats, please. Tonight's text will be taken from the book of First Peter, chapter two, verse nine. First Peter, chapter two, verse nine. Most of us probably know the scripture by heart. This was um, said, "But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation." A peculiar people that are called to show forth the praise of him who has called you out of darkness unto his marvelous light. And if I have to give this um, discussion a title, I would say the title would be that you are special. You are special. This was the definition that um, Peter gave to the children, those that have received the Lord Jesus Christ and are born again. He said, you are a royal priesthood. Notice that those are two different powerful words. First of all, you are royalty. That means you are the son or the daughter of a king. It means you are either a prince or a princess. He said, you are also a priest. That means he or she that is called to stand before God on behalf of the people of God. So you are a holy nation, a peculiar people. That means you are not just an ordinary person. You are a different kind of person, a peculiar person. And in the next couple of lines it says, it shows the reason why he had called you so. The reason is that, that you should show the praise of him that has called you. The reason why God has called you a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, is that you should show the light of him that has called you, which is God, out of darkness unto his marvelous light. That means you should let your light shine amongst men, so that when men will see your light, they will give glory unto your Father in heaven. This is the way that Christians are defined. And it is important for us to understand how we define ourselves. How do you define yourself? Because there was a man of God that said a long time ago that um, it is important for you to define yourself. Because if you don't define yourself, the world would define you and when they define you, they have a right to judge you by their own definition. That means you have an opportunity to tell the world or to show the world who you really are as a child of God. And it's important for this definition of yourself to be aligned with God's definition of you. Because if it's non-aligned, with the way that God has defined you, you will be looking at yourself from a different prison, maybe from the eyes of men. 
Scripture says, As a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7. As you think of yourself, that is the way that you are. It's not about how other people think about you. It is not about what other people think about you. The honest is how do you see yourself? How do you define yourself? Is your definition of yourself aligned with the way that God has defined you? There are some people that have been defined by their circumstances in their lives. An example is a man called Bartimaeus. The Bible defined him as blind Bartimaeus because he had a disability. And that disability was how everybody else pretty much defined him. If they ask him, which Bartimaeus are you talking about? He said, don't you know him? That blind Bartimaeus. That was how the world defined him. And we also, a few weeks ago, we talked about how the education system in this country is really quick to define kids. Especially if the kids are not quite um, a little bit slow, or maybe they're not quite reaching the benchmark that they have set. They will be very quick to define the child. And you will notice that that definition will trail the child almost all the days of their academic lives. So it is important to know how to define yourself and whose definition you will go by. So we'll look at how God defined us. When I talk about us, I'm talking about those that have a special relationship with God, those that have given their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ, those that have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. How does God define you? Does not matter what your circumstances are. Does not matter what your situation is today. There's an African proverb that says that... Um, it is, not complete, there are, it is not completely over for a prince that you will not be able to know, that there will not be some signs that this person is a prince or a princess. I'll say it in um, my African native language, so for some people that will understand it. That means it is not completely over there will still be some sign on the prince. Even if you see him suffering, there will still be some signs that will show that this person or this person or these people are not, they are peculiar people. That was what happened when um, King Nebuchadnezzar took Judah into captivity. He was able to select some peculiar people Daniel, Meshach, Shidrach, and Abednego. He selected them because there were signs on them that these ones are not normal. These ones are not commoners. These ones are, are from the royal home or royal family. There were some peculiar things he saw in them. So it is important if you have a special relationship with God, you are, you are a special person. How does God define you and what are some of the privileges that come with such definition? Zechariah Zachariah 2 verse 8 says, God called you the apple of his eyes. He said, For thus says the Lord of hosts, After the glory has he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you. For he that touched you touched the apple of his eyes. That means God regards you or looks at you as the apple of his eyes. That means you are a very precious person in his hand. That he that touches you touches the apple of God's eye. When David was overwhelmed with what God has done for man, he asks in Psalm 8, verse 4 and 5, Say, Who is man that you have made him, you are so mindful of him? And who is man that you have made him a little lower than angels? Who is man that you have made him a little lower than angels? And some people will say, Well, maybe I'm not that special because God made me a little lower than angels. 
Hebrews chapter 1 verse 5 answered the question. He said, how many for who for whom for whom of for unto which of his angels said he at any time thou art sons this day have I begotten thee and again I will be to him for a father and he shall be to me as a son the writer of Hebrew here was saying that all of the angels that God has created he had never called any of them son he had not never said unto them that I will be a father unto you and in verse 13 he said which of his angels has he said sit on my right hand until I make thy enemy thy footstool so God regards has a special relationship with you especially if you've given your life to him the Lord Jesus Christ said um, in John chapter 15 verse 15 he said behold I called you no more servants for servants knoweth not what his Lord doeth but I've called you friends for all the things that I have heard of my father I have made known unto you that is the Lord king of kings the Lord of lords saying that he no more calls you servants that means we are called servants at one time but for as many as have received him, scripture says it gives power to become the sons of God. Remember um, a story that Daddy Gio told a while ago. He said um, a prophet came to him and um, said he has heard, he got a message from God for him. And he said, okay, so what did God say? He said, the man said, go and tell Adeboye, my servant, that X, Y, Z, said, stop there. God did not tell you. Because God does not refer to me as a servant. He refers to me as a, as a son. So if God has truly sent you, he will say, go and tell Adeboye, my son. Not Adeboye, my servant. So that just kind of settles, settles that. It is important for you to know how God sees you. Because if you don't know, it is very easy for you to get manipulated. It is very easy for you to get tricked. Because there are so many people running around as false prophets. The Lord redeemed you because he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. John 3, 16. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Romans chapter 8 verse 15 say you have not received the spirit you have not received the spirit you have no more received the spirit of bondage again to fear but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry Abba Father we have received the spirit of adoption where we cry Abba Father it's important to know that almost all throughout the Old Testament you will never find any of the prophets or any of the priests or anyone in the scripture call God my father. It is, you will never find it. But because God has a special relationship with you, he allowed you to call him Abba Father. Romans 8.15 and in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 he said that you should come before his throne of grace boldly 416 therefore come on boldly unto his throne of grace that ye may obtain mercy and find grace or help in the time of need we also recall that in the Old Testament the Jews at that time they were servants of God they would never they they cannot get it. There are some spots in the temple that they cannot get to. So once in a year, on the during Yom Kippur, the high priest, who first of all do atonement for himself, before he goes into the Holy of Holies to atone for the children of Israel. That was how their sins were covered once a year. 
But scripture tells us here that you can go into the throne of grace of God boldly. You can enter the throne room of grace boldly to obtain mercy and help for the time of need. However, it's not so for everyone because not everyone knows that they are special, especially if they have received the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Some people still wallow in the valley of depression or they still wallow in the valley of bondage because they don't know who they are or what are the privileges that are accrued to being called special by God. King Solomon in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, chapter 10 verse 7. He said that he had seen an evil in the world. He said, I have seen a servant upon the horses and the prince walking as servants on the face of the earth. Pretty much saying that he has seen the prince that was supposed to be on the horse is walking while the servant that is supposed to be walking is on the horse. That is an anomaly. The prince cannot be walking behind a horse that is being ridden by the servant. And ironically, that is a position where a lot of people find themselves because they've not successfully identified themselves as children of God. Or they don't know that they are special before God. In Psalm 24, verse 1. Scripture says the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, the world and them that dwelleth in it. It is ironic that some pe- if God, your father, owns the entire world, some people are still held in bondage or in captivity here on earth. How can a prince or a princess be a slave or a captive in his father's kingdom? or in his father's territory. It is important for us to take a look at our lives. Paul said, examine yourself to see if you are in faith. How have you described yourself? How have you defined yourself? How have you identified yourself? You identified yourself by the standards of the world. Have you defined yourself by the way the circumstances around you put you? Or have you defined yourself the way that the Lord calls you? The Lord Jesus Christ said, Behold, I call you no more servants. I call you friends. And it's important for us to just reflect. If for some reason we have not truly or fully identified ourselves, or lived according to the potentials that God has given unto us. It is important to do a turnaround. Luke chapter 15 told us the story of the prodigal son. He was a son of a wealthy man. But at some point, he went in the way of the world. After he had suffered and as really gone into where he ought not to be. Verse 17 said, he, when he came to his senses, he said, I will go back to my father. When he came to his senses. So it's important for us to, after examining ourselves, to identify where we are, how we have defined ourselves, not just by the word of mouth, but by the lifestyle that we live by the things that we do, how we live. If you are a prince, there are ways and things that you will do and things that you would not do. A royal family in the United Kingdom, there are, there are certain protocols that you will never find them you know, in certain places because they understand who they are. They know that by birth they are special. By the reason of their heritage, they're not just like a commoner. As a matter of fact, if they ever marry a commoner, 
In some cases, they will be ostracized. And if we know that we are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, there are certain things that should be prevalent in our lives. There are certain traits that people will look at and say, surely, this one is a prince. This one is a princess. There are certain ways that you will speak. There are certain ways in which you will carry yourself. But if for some reason you don't know, the enemy will feed your mind to define yourself with your current circumstances or your current situation. In verse 18, he said, I will go back to my father. It's important to realize who we are. Paul wrote to the Galatian church in Galatians chapter 6 verse 17. After he had realized who he is or who he was, when he came to his senses, he said from henceforth, let no man trouble me because I bear in my body the mark of the Lord Jesus Christ. From now on, let no man trouble me. You know, maybe he been going through, people have been troubling and you know, just giving him a whole bunch of uh, crap. Maybe the enemy has just been tormenting him here and there, playing him like ball. All, but when he came to his senses, when the understanding came that he's not an ordinary person, when the understanding came that he's a, he has a special relationship with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, he told them that from now on, let no one trouble me because in my body I bear the mark of Christ. You know, on Sunday, um, Pastor Bailey taught us to pray, um, to pray bold prayers. But you will not be able to pray a bold prayer if you don't have a special relationship with the Lord. Scripture says in Daniel 11.32 that they that know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. It is when you have a special relationship with God that you can stand like Joshua and say, let the sun stand still until I kill all of the Amalekites. Or you can stand upon the mount like Elijah and said, let fire come down from heaven. It is only when you have, when you know that you have a special relationship, that is when you will get an uncommon boldness to say, like Elijah said, that there shall be no rain, but at my word. He stood upon the word of God and declared, does says the Lord. It is only when you know your position, when you know the kind of relationship you have, when you know your God, that is when you can stand and declare bold prayers like that. But if you don't, you just be, uh, you know, praying a uh, uh, job, you know. It is important for us to realize who we are, what God has done for us, what he plans to do, and our relationship with him. And if you don't have a special relationship with God, there is still an opportunity. You know, um, as an African proverb that says, if the, if the animal is not dead, you cannot use his skin to make a drum. You know, if you are not dead, there is still an opportunity for you to have a special relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. A relationship that will cause you to pray a bold prayer. A relationship that will cause you to sleep in peace. Because you know that he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. A relationship that will cause you to cast out demons. And there will not be any iota of fear in your mind because you know whose you are and who you are. So 
the Lord Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 11 verse 28. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It is ironic that we live in an age and time where there's what we call packaging. You know, there's what we call packaging. Um, you know, they call it... Um, well, that's what they call it in Africa, packaging. That's in a situation where you tend to deceive people. You tend to bring an illusion of what is not and act as if it is. You know, you try to live a false life. You try to live a life of, um, of, um, of hypocrisy. You know, and that is very prevalent. Say, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. There are lots of people that are laboring today. There are lots of people that are carrying heavy burden that they ought not to be carrying because they don't have a special relationship with God. And that relationship can only come through the Lord Jesus Christ. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You know, it's just like a guy that is that was carrying firewood on his head. And somebody that has a truck pulled by and said, hey man, let me give you a ride. And um, he jumped into the truck. He's still carrying the firewood on his head. And the guy said, ah, I'm giving you a ride, you know, put the firewood there. I said, no, 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 it's, it's okay on my head like this. So you are getting on a ride and you're still carrying your body with you. See, one thing that I found out is that God did not create man as a beast of burden. That's why the Lord Jesus Christ is calling. Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 22. He said, return, O ye faithless people, and I will cure your backsliding. If you don't have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, if you have been pretending or acting, if you know and you know that you don't have this special relationship that we're talking about, there is still an opportunity today. Say, so come unto me. All you have to do is just say, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy upon me. Forgive me all of my sins. Come into my heart and dwell with me. As simple as that is, if you mean it, I can assure you that salvation will come into your life. But a lot of us will choose to act in ways in which we're not quite who we ought to be and we're not asking the Lord for help. I pray that the Lord will help us today as we discuss this topic in Jesus' name. I'm going to stop here. Let us take questions and